Welcome to the Mark Silver Show, Advancing Your Photography, where we bring you tips from remarkable photographers about how to take photographs you love. We're here at Silver Studios near Stanford University with our guest Teru Kuwayama, a veteran documentary photographer who frequently finds himself in the remote regions of Iraq or Afghanistan. He's carved out a nomadic path across Asia and the Middle East, seeking out remote, undeveloped, and conflicted areas. His haunting and gritty images are shot with, as he puts it, semi-functional Polaroids and toy cameras. His work has been featured in a stream of publications, including Outside, Newsweek, Fortune, and National Geographic. His photographs have received numerous awards and citations, including grants from the Alexia Foundation for World Peace and the New York Foundation of the Arts. He is presently at Stanford on a John S. Knight Fellowship. So, Teru, thanks for joining us. What's your passion as far as photography? I think photographing is a way of exploring for me. So at, in the beginning, it was very linked to traveling in places. It was a way for me to go to places that I wouldn't otherwise. And once I was there to go deeper into them, it was a, probably an excuse to connect with people in a more intrusive way than, than I could otherwise. But um, I guess it's my way of asking questions and exploring and, and uh, dealing with my curiosity about things, how they work, how they don't work. What would you say you look for when you go out? I tend to look for a counter-narrative, I guess. I mean, past eight years, I've been photographing mostly in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and so I tend to look for what I'm not seeing or what I'm not hearing about. Um, if I'm working for news magazines, for example, pretty typically you're, you're sent to photograph a crisis or you're sent to photograph uh, uh, some kind of disaster or some kind of scenario of warfare and maybe it's like um, a contrarian aspect of myself I tend to look for whatever I'm told not to so if I'm being sent to look for a disaster I tend to look for the opposite or if I'm being told by somebody that the situation is fine and that there's nothing wrong then I tend to look for uh, the opposite um, but I think it's really it's just about being open to what's really happening. So I'm interested in that contrarian side of you, because that sounds like that's mm -hmm. pretty core in terms of your photography. Um, sure. I mean, I can remember a few years ago working in Afghanistan, for example, at that time, you could tell that there was a, a real message being projected that the situation was fine, that it was a mission accomplished, that everything was okay. And it didn't take much looking to, to see that things were not going that way and that there was a different reality that wasn't being projected. So I looked for that and it wasn't very difficult to find that. Is there anything you've kind of learned along the way that you think you could pass along as far as getting out and capturing those raw, gritty moments of life? Maybe just not to overthink things. I mean, photography is, is as obsessive as photographers tend to get about things and as hung up as we tend to get about technology and gadgets and stuff like that it's ultimately it's it's just a button in a, in a square or a rectangle and uh, a shutter speed and an aperture and you know there's not very much to it you you look at something and you decide to record it that's all it is and you mentioned that you shoot with toy cameras and Polaroids. What's the story? I use there? any kind of camera that I can find I mean I, I, I like cameras I'm, they're curious to me they're like there are they're all toys to me, so uh, some pe sometimes people uh, identify some kinds of cameras as toy cameras because they're made out of plastic or they're cheap or um, cameras just a box that holds film or you know these days a, a digital sensor. So they're all toys and they're all real. So I'm interested in that point of compassion. Mm -hmm. How does that affect your photography? Your compassion for a subject or an area. Well, I think it's probably it's the only thing that makes a photograph uh, have any impact is 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 your feeling for for the thing that you photographed. If you don't feel anything for it, then why would you expect anybody looking at your pictures to? It's it's the basic thread that that ties the the pieces together. What do you think makes you happiest as a photographer? 
maybe once in a rare while when you make a photograph that even though you made it, like you're still interested in looking at it, um, something where what you recorded is on some level more powerful or more real to you than, than the real instance itself, than the thing that, that, the thing that really happened. Most photographs are surprises, something that uh, a photograph that you that you're wondering whether it was worth the film when you took the picture and uh, later you find out that 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 it, uh, it it has some real resonance to you. Any advice that you would like to give viewers in terms of improving their photography? I think don't think about it too much, you know, don't don't uh, just enjoy it. And um, um, it's don't get hung up on toys and uh, have a good time. Jeru, thanks for joining us and for giving us a look at your world of photography. Sure thing. Thanks. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show, and we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also, check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silver reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life.